only a few months ago, I reviewed the DxO Photo Lab 3, which left me wondering if it would be the software that I could use for my commercial jobs and replace my current Adobe Suite. It was a great software, but there were just a few things that didn't quite cut it, especially the confusing editing layout. Having spent the past few weeks using the brand new Photo Lab version 4, here are my thoughts. Welcome, my name is Jimmy Chang. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker. This channel is about sharing my 15 years of experience as a pro together with reviews on new techs and gadgets to help you become a better photographer and filmmaker with a focus on Olympus Micro Four Thirds because I'm an Olympus ambassador too. So smash that subscribe button and put on the bell notification to stay tuned for all my upcoming videos. Here we are looking at the brand new DxO Photo Lab. I must admit, photo editing software outside of the Adobe universe have improved dramatically over the past few years. Almost all of them have killer features that can power through any Adobe stuff. More noticeably in the deep learning AI tech, likes of Lumina, Topaz and of course DxO are now in the race of AI powered editing. Similar to Topaz, DxO now uses deep learning AI to assist and enhance the photo quality, which I will come to that later. But unlike Lumina, which uses AI to actually do the editing for you, like replacing skies or background for your photos. Just a quick overview on some of the main features that were carried over to PhotoLab 4, including the fantastic local adjustment tool. This is by far one of my favorites, as you can get really focused on your image on the screen. Since all the adjustment level can be seen locally where you want to apply, rather than in the palette in Adobe Lightroom for instance, all the options are available at the point you select. Other features like Smart Lighting, Clearview and Prime are just as great. Smart Lighting is a great first step in exposure adjustment, since it analyzes the scene or the frame and determines whether it's under or overexposed. Then it applies the right amount of highlight and shadow adjustments automatically, you can of course adjust the intensity of this automation, then further control it manually after. Within Smart Lighting, there's also a feature called Spot Weighted, which is a confusing term for some photographers, as spot metering usually referring to exposure to the center portion of the frame. But in PhotoLab 4, you can select a spot for metering or exposure adjustment. The clever thing is, if PhotoLab sees a face or faces in the frame, it will automatically expose to them very handy. Despite all these automations, as I said, you can still manually override any or all of them if you are a very experienced editor. Clearview is almost like clarity or dehaze in Adobe Lightroom, just better. It only has one slider, but it does a grand job in extracting details from the scene. But like anything, don't whack it all the way to 100%. Just a little bit is more than enough to make your image pop. Better still, you can use local adjustment to pinpoint where you want Clearview to perform its magic. Then Prime Noise Reduction. <laughs> In PhotoLab 4, they have a new enhancement noise reduction feature called Deep Prime. Okay, I'll leave it later since this deserves a totally separate and longer talk on this. All standard editing functions like curves, basic exposure, contrast adjustment, color temperature, hill, and tint are all there. Just now, better presented. DxO finally uses a knife to spread the creamy butter evenly on the toast, rather than lumping it on the previous version. What I mean is that version 3 was powerful, but the user experience wasn't something that I would call smooth, all because of the very cluttered and confusing editing palettes. So in the latest PhotoLab 4, DxO rearranges everything and also introduces a new tab layout that groups certain editing features in various tabs, a much needed approach and cleaner and easier to follow too. Better still, the way these tabs are laid out follows most editors' logical workflow, from left to right. First, adjust the exposure and contrast of the photo, then colors, 
then details and corrections, which includes noise reduction, sharpening, chromatic aberration reduction, repair and cloning tool, distortion and volume corrections, and also local adjustment tools. And finally, effects like adding watermarks, filters, special effects, film grains and vignetting etc. All makes it much easier to follow. And now, I would go as far as saying that it's easy to use for a professional grade editor. However, if you are already an existing Photolab user and already accustomed to the original layout, you can revert back by customizing the editing palettes yourself. Now, I did say that the new Photolab 4's latest noise reduction feature is worth a dedicated section in my review, and I do mean it. Ready? Introducing the Deep Prime. Yeah, deep, very deep. An all singing, all dancing, cleverer than Superman's brain deep learning AI noise reduction function that's going to redefine what noise reduction should be. Wow, what a mouthful. Okay, some of you may already see my live demo a couple of weeks back, but if you missed that video, here's the link to it. At the time, I was still playing with the pre-release version of the software, which really blew me away. Not like a gentle blow, uh, it's more like a hurricane blow. <laughs> I was shocked by how good it is to remove all those noise and to recover and extract missing details from my high ISO images. I would even call it magic. One of the biggest hindrances of using smaller format digital cameras like the Micro Four Third, for instance, is high ISO performance. The Prime essentially gives you full stop plus of noise reduction performance for your raw files. Together with all the usual DxO goodness like camera and lens profile corrections, Photolab 4 really squeezes all the last bit of juice from your image files, which is darn right amazing. I'm stoked. Really, I am. Here's an example of a rare accidental image I took a couple of days ago. I forgot to reset my ISO after photographing in a very dim room. I left the ISO at 2000, <laughs> yeah, you heard that right, then went out and took a few shots in bright daylight. I would normally ignore these images, but when I got home, I thought, well, maybe it's time to give the photo lab 4 a try. So I edited the entire photo shoot on it. Yes, this is my very first full commercial shoot edited in DxO Photolab. I'm not gonna lie, I'm used to using DxO as a plugin to do smaller things, so I was a little nervous at first. When I got to these high ISO images, I clicked Deep Prime, and bang! The files magically reversed to a clean, detailed images that look like I shot at ISO 400, which is totally acceptable, even for printing. Now, this is true magic. For more demo shots, you will only be more amazed. A little reminder though, that Deep Prime does require more time to process for export, and it will not show in the image preview as a whole, but you can inspect the details with the loop window under the Deep Prime editing panel. You don't have to trust me, DxO offers free trial for this. At time of making this video, they are still running an intro discount of up to 30% for this, and I have a link in my description, so you can check it out yourself. Just a note though, this Deep Prime thing is only available on the Elite version of the Photolab, but you are getting a lot more than the basic version, and definitely worth considering. I'm definitely getting a little too excited about the Deep Prime. It's so deep. Deep, really deep. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, apart from the new layout and the exciting AI noise reduction, they also make batch processing a lot easier by introducing copy and paste edits. Well, for all your Adobe guys out there, you may already know just how convenient it is to sync your edit settings to other cold images in the same set. Now DxO has it, which is good and as effective as Adobe. One thing I found weird was that instead of having a button, I have to go through menu or use the keyboard shortcuts to do it. An extra step that can be avoided, and perhaps a future update will improve it. Speaking of shortcuts, I do hope that there are more keyboard shortcuts for other functions especially for calling images. At the moment, you can press the numeric keyboards to set star ratings, but there isn't shortcuts for pick or reject. You have to go through the menu once again, or physically click the green or red button on the image to do that. Finally, what I would like to truly make this a flexible tool for mobile photographers like myself is to have the ability to either collapse or hide the palette columns. And the film strip. 
or even allowed floating palettes and edit in full screen mode. Like what we used to have in Apple's renowned but dead Aperture program. Since using Photo Lab 4, even on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, with everything on, it's a little challenging for my aging eyes. So anyway, to make image area bigger would definitely be a bonus for people who like me were working on smaller screen. So, is DxO's latest Photo Lab 4 better than its predecessor? Absolutely, by many miles, especially with the new AI-based noise reduction. That alone is worth having if you shoot a lot of high ISO or raw images using smaller format digital cameras. But the million dollar question is, is it now a genuine contender to take on the current pro market leader, the Adobe Lightroom? A quick answer is, yes. In version three, I was hesitating to say it and offered it as an alternative or a complementary setup alongside Lightroom. But PhotoLab 4's new layout together with all the improved features makes it a genuine replacement for many photographers. There are still a couple of things that could be improved like picking and rejecting photos or maybe even bigger thumbnail for culling images. And these are potentially easy fixes for DxO in future updates. However, if you are currently utilizing Adobe's cloud services and mobile editing suite on iOS or Android, then sadly, DxO may not be for you at this moment in time because they don't have any mobile solutions yet. So if you are using a full-fledged laptop or desktop computer for your work and not your smartphone or tablet, then have a try and see for yourself. It's been a while for me to get excited about a software and DxO really got me this time. And that's it folks, hope you enjoyed today's review and let me know in the comment section down below what you think about Photo Lab 4. And if you managed to try it, also let me know about your thoughts too. Thanks again for watching and you know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to support this channel and me. Peace! Yes! Fuck it! Ah! Oh. <laughs>